Welcome to the Life Handmade Podcast with Scrapbook.com. This is the show for paper crafters, and I'm your host, Stephanie Foster. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with Shari Pack of Persnickety Prints. Shari grew up in Utah, and as the oldest child and grandchild, she would spend hours watching her grandfather set up reels to his 35mm projector and watch family videos. No sound, of course. She loved visiting her local Pebbles in My Pocket store with her mother die cutting and scrapbooking her high school memories, and then marriage and baby books. In high school, Shari spent time on the football field, filming highlights of games with a heavy VHS camcorder propped up on her shoulder, and then edited video for the school's Tiger TV channel. 20 plus years later, memory keeping is still her passion. In 2009, Sherry was using digital scrapbooking to document the lives of her husband and three boys, and she couldn't find a quality archival 12 by 12 print at an affordable price. After her long search, she saw a need and created her own, and she is now the owner of Persnickety Prints. In this episode, we will talk to Shari about why it's important to document your life, both the good and the bad times, and why it's so important to get those photos off of your phone and computer and to get them printed. She will be sharing why she thinks albums are better than photo books, and I know you're going to be inspired by her and her enthusiasm that she has for memory keeping. Thanks so much for joining us today, Shari. Welcome. Thank you, Stephanie, for having me. We're so excited to speak with you. And it sounds like you've always had a love for documenting and taking photos and scrapbooking. Do you remember what your very first scrapbook was? Oh, yeah. When I was a little girl, I loved taking pictures. And this is back in the film days. I would save my babysitting money for rolls of film and um, and developing costs, of course. And then in the fifth grade, I we had at our elementary school... Um, our fifth grade class, and there was not a yearbook at that time. So I went ahead and scrapbooked yearbooks and sold them for $5 each, taking what? pictures of the school class um, throughout the year, oh um, just because I've always loved photos. That's impressive. Fifth grade. That's got to be like a record for the youngest photographer in your book. <laughs> I'm sure they weren't great. <laughs> That's yeah. incredible. And you made money off of them too, huh? Yeah. That is impressive. Um, I know you're still a scrapbooker today. Um, so when it comes to scrapbooking right now, what is your cannot live without product? Well, for me, it's always been the albums, um, somewhere to put my photos. Um, I, I, you know, I scrapbooked with my mom when I was a young girl and I have scrapbooks from high school all the way up until now. And I just have never been like a three hour a page scrapbooker the ADD kicks in and I'm like, I'm over it. So I've just really loved the photo part of it and telling the story through photos. And so the albums are very important to me. And it's been fun uh, being in this industry for so long and playing with different albums and um, journals and, and planners and such. Yeah, uh, there's their endless possibilities, right? Um, You actually one thing that I love about your, your website is the content that's on it. So not just the ordering of the photos, but you really provide some great content. Um, And one of the articles that you posted pretty recently was called Why Albums Are Better Than Photo Books. And can you just talk for a minute about why you think this is the case, which your company does print hardcover photo books as well, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So so you love them both, but why do you lean more towards the albums and specifically like the pocket page albums? Well, that's a good question, Stephanie. And it's um, that's what's been interesting about being on this side of the memory keeping, on the printing side of it. Um, as I've learned throughout the years and seen all the different processes for printing a photo, there are archival ways of printing, which is what we do at Persnickety, um, which need albums because darkroom printing um, is the as a f- we're still is what we're still doing, and we're taking your digital image whether it be from your phone or a DSLR, and we're converting it to a digital negative and then processing it like film. And that's what these machines do. Um, Because of the way that these process, we can't print two-sided photographs. And that's what moves people into photo books. Now, there are a few companies out there that print silver highlight bound photo books, but they're more of like a a real hardcover. You could probably only fit 20 to 40 pages in them, um, more like a nice wedding album. Mm -hmm. And so it's really, they're really not meant 
for everyday scrapbookers because we're printing so many layouts. Um, not only would they be expensive, but they and um, they get really heavy because they're two pieces, they're two prints adhered to a board in the middle. Um, and so, with hardcover books and even softcover books, yes, we offer those um, on our website. However, it's not something we focus on. You'll notice like when we are sharing content and ways to document and storytell, um, we really don't focus on photo books. And why that is, is just because of the archival nature of them. Um, I mean, if anyone has a photo book that's over 10 years old, I, I would recommend and challenge you to go pull that photo book out off the shelf and look at it and look at the edges and see if you start seeing some yellowing around the edges because 90% of you probably have photo books that are yellowing um, that you aren't that you don't even realize um, and you know also printing at home that's a whole nother a whole nother element um, but that's what I why I'm so passionate about our process is because we're telling stories and um, in this day and age we want everything immediate gratification we want it now we want it today um, but in the long run, those prints aren't always going to last. Well, the archival reason I think is huge. And also, I love that you broke down kind of the pricing because sometimes we think um, it'll be a lot less expensive to do the the big photo books, the digital ones, um, and have them printed. But in reality, printing, you kind of did a breakout, right, of like how much it would cost to break to print the photo, um, to have the page protector, to have the album. And it actually comes out less expensive to do it that right that way. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, depending, I mean, that's what we try so hard. You know, the 12 by 12 scrapbook print um, is the photographic layout is kind of what we started out with, um, with our business. And they're $1.99. Like you can't get a professional photograph, a uh, 12 inch no. for that cheap. And so we really try to make um, our pricing, um, you know, affordable so that we can have these photographs and put them in albums and feel like they are, you know, economical for everybody. Yeah. And even I know the the print at home option is, you know, a lot of people have their pocket printers, and that type of thing. But you do spend so much more, I think, on those um, those prints and the paper or the ink. And um, you can't beat your prices on your website. And I, yeah, I can't say enough about that. When I was looking at another, like a another competitor, their 12 by 12 was $8.99, you know, for a 12 by 12. And yours was $1.99. Like, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And really, $8.99 is what it should be. I mean, really, but we are able to... Um, negotiate pricing with our suppliers with Fuji. And because we have such a high volume um, of 12 by 12 print orders, they give us a discount and then we pass that on to you guys. That's amazing. Um, and just as a little sneak peek, speaking of albums, um, we're so excited. Scrapbook.com is going to be releasing some new six by eight albums, which is my absolute favorite size because it's so doable. 12 by 12 can be overwhelming sometimes. Um, but they're six by eight, they're leather, they're gorgeous colors, there's some polka dots, we've got the page protectors coming, and we also have a nine by 12 size too. So we've got some fun things in the works at scrapbook.com oh, too. Where I can't you can, wait. Yes, put all those photos oh, in Oh, I love those sizes. I love all my travel albums are six by eight. Are they? So yeah, that'll be fun. And hopefully we'll be able to travel again really soon. soon. I hope so. One other thing I love that you put on there with the page protector albums with the pocket pages, you can also put in your tangible items, right? You can insert that movie ticket or something from your travels or, you know, do the handwriting or the little notes or letters that you want to put in there with it, which you can't do like in a bound photo album. There is so many variables to the different, for me that, I mean, there's so many more wins in a pocket album than there is a bound photo book for, I mean, and for one thing for me, when I scrapbook or um, you know, put my photos together. It's definitely at a time when I'm feeling it. And so um, I want to do it now. Otherwise, I won't do it. And with photo books, I just there's no way I would complete one for the year or six months even um, and still be excited about it. So I like I don't always scrapbook in order as well. 
Same. Me too. I like I liked the smaller books because you can do little events as they happen and then and then you're done, which I talked a little bit about before, but doing like a coronavirus um, scrapbook. And I've loved watching what you are doing with yours. Can you tell us a little bit about what how you've been documenting this pandemic that we're still in the middle of at this current time of recording? Yeah. You know, it's so funny because when this all started, we didn't go out thinking, hey, let's let's help people create Corona journals. My mentality was my boys were two and three years old during 9-11. And they learn about it in school now. They learn about 9-11, about um, what happened. I took them to New York to see the 9-11 museum. And it was all new to them. And they're like, wow, this is crazy. But they don't remember. And this was this is a huge you know, tragedy and a huge part of history. And so now here we are in 2020. And I'm sitting here thinking, oh, you know, I really wish I would have done more. You know, I was a scrapbooker back then, but I don't think I did more of like a daily. I mean, that's that's something I've kind of changed over time um, is I did more of like, oh, here we are at Disneyland. I should have done, you know, I wish I would have done more of the 9-11, like everyday pictures and what we were dealing with and, you know, news articles and things and where my boys were actually in it. Um, And so with that, I thought, hey, let's create a Corona journal. Sure, we're all a little older now and they may remember this. My youngest is 13. And um, and then I have them all write their feelings in the journal as well. And we put, you know, put little things in there. And this is more of a journal journal where I'm gluing pictures on, but there's still archival pictures and and hopefully they're going to, you know, we'll have it forever. And we're just writing a piece of history here. It's so important. And they'll be able to. Use that, you know, with their their kids, their grandkids to be like, I remember when and and they'll remember better because you had them document this time. Absolutely. Which is great. And again, you have great content on your website with this with quarantine interview templates for the kids, um, lots of inspiration on, on what you're doing to journal this time. So that has been wonderful. Um, so in this digital age, why, you know, everybody's got their photos on the phone and on the computer. Why do you feel it's so important to get the photos off of your devices and print them? Oh, Stephanie, with age comes wisdom. <laughs> Let me just tell you. Um, there are so many reasons why our phones are great and we have thousands of photos and we're taking more photos than we ever took before. And for some of you listening, you may not even remember those film days. However, um, the scary thing is, is technology is moving faster and faster. And we have these digital JPEGs sitting on our phone. Probably 80% of us are not backing them up. And then those that are, hopefully they're organized so that we can come back and sift through 50,000 photos when we need to find that one. Um, we have new file formats coming out. Um, Apple just released, released a format called HEI. See if you've heard of that, where it's compressing your photo in your phone so that your phone can now hold um, more photos. Well, we see problems with that because sometimes our HEIC file isn't converting to a JPEG as it should. And um, you can't read it on a computer if you don't have the right software. And, and, you know, when my boys were little, I used iPhoto. And this was a huge eye opener for me because I was obsessed about backing up their pictures. I made CDs for each of them with all of their iPhoto libraries backed up. Um, and now I, well, first of all, now we, I, my computer doesn't have a CD, <laughs> a right? CD holder. Yes. Um, and so, you know, hopefully we'll have, the, you know, be able to even look at them. But what I found is I put my CD in to to pull up their photos and I saved the iPhoto library in the iPhoto library format. And I don't have iPhoto 0.427 anymore, whatever version we're on. So in order to read my disc, I have to actually go backwards into the software and try to, you know, find that software um, version. And it's, it's impossible. And so I just, I saved them wrong and I'm just going, gosh, this is such a, anyway, it's just, it's kind of inundating and daunting. Really. There's, um, one, one article that I have shared, um, a man named Vince Cerf. He's actually the founder of the internet is what they call him. The father of the internet. You can Google him, V-I-N-T and then C-E-R-F. He gave a speech a couple of years ago. I mean, this is the man that created the internet. And he's telling people, do not trust the internet with your documents and with your photos, because data can be ruined in two seconds. 
um, and, you know, and corrupted and, and, you know, where is it and do, are we backing it up and stuff? And so, um, that was a really big eye opener too, for people when, when he came out that speech. Absolutely. And we've all lost photos on computers that have crashed, you know, our phones changed, just like you said, um, we don't know if we'll be able to read a JPEG in 20 years, like you've said as well. So, so important to print them off. And I've, I've kind of started trying to do this more often where, you know, I'll print the photos that I want to use in a scrapbook, but sometimes I don't get all those other ones off of my phone. And not that we have to print every single one, because I don't think they're all, you know, needing to be printed, but at least once a month, I'll go through and like favorite my favorite photos from that month. And then every few months, I'll at least do a batch of those photos to be printed just so that I can continuously have them for that year and to document because otherwise it does get so overwhelming if you wait too long that you don't want to go back in and go back through those thousands and thousands of pictures. So absolutely. And another reason why I like albums is because you could add, you know, if you miss something in February, you can go back and add a page in there. Um, I also always end up with more prints than I put in my like pockets. And so I always have extras in the back of every single album that are just loose prints, but they're still there and they're fun to go through. Really smart. And I've got a photo box for each of my kids that um, we're on like box two or three now, but uh, that I keep the extra photos to go into their boxes so that I have my family one, but then they each can have, if you know, if they were in the pictures, I put them into their photo boxes too, so that they have them. So that's a great I never idea. have too many copies of photos either. So yeah. And you know, what's other, you know, what else is crazy, Stephanie, let me just add this. We also have, I also wrote a blog post because situations happen and I'm like, I've got to share this with people. Mm-hmm. Another problem is people are using Facebook and Instagram as photo storage. And when you go into, if you ever wanted to print an eight by 10 or a 16 by 20, because we've had this so many times, um, they're compressed and they can't print that large. They will be pixelated. They don't, you know, they're barely visible as a four by six or a four by four. And, um, and so, but I can actually take your four by six print, the actual physical print, and I can scan it at 1200 DPI and I can blow that up into a 60 by 20, 24 by 36, because the pixels are there more so than um, taking a pixel and trying to enlarge a pixel because the pixels are gone once we put them onto those social media platforms. Really? Yeah, that's really good to know. Important to remember, too, because, yeah, we think, oh, it's online. I can I can go back and access it, but it's not the same photo. So mm-hmm. really important. So let's go back kind of backwards now a little bit to the beginning. And let's talk about your company, Persnickety Prints, and, and how did it get started originally? Well, um, originally it was started because I had three little boys and I did not have a house that had a craft room. And so whenever I wanted to scrapbook their, you know, their firsts and all of that, it would take forever to pull everything out, work on, work on it and then put everything back. Well, I saw a neighbor, she had shown me her 12 by 12 digital scrapbook. And I'm like, what? These drop shadows, they look like they're real. And it was beautiful. And I didn't know that that was even possible. And so I took classes at our local college at night um, and learned Photoshop, learned how to create digital layouts. And then I'm just like every other user, I am trying to print those. And I'm sending them off to print at Costco or, um, well, Costco specifically. And I'm like, okay, I just spent, you know, a good hour on this layout. The colors are different. Why are things cropping? Why can't that little thin border on the outside? Where did that go? And it was so frustrating. And so then um, we have a professional lab here. um, And I'm like, I'm just going to try there. And I, you know, they were $13, $14 a print there. And it was like night and day difference in quality. And I'm like, okay, I've got to figure this out because I'm spending all this time creating these digital layouts and they're not um, printing as I intend on them, how I want them. And so um, I actually went to that professional camera lab and I started a little company there and they traded me for a camera because I, I also wanted a, a new DSLR, the Nikon D90. And I'm like, look, I'll work for free. There are people out there that I didn't even realize that scrapbooking was bigger. It was as big as it is at that time. And this is back in 2008. And um, I'm like, look, people need 12 by 12s. And so let's figure out a way to make them cheaper and better and and we can help all these people because there's more scrapbookers out there than, than what I realized. 
And, um, and so that's kind of how I got started. Um, you know, with, then I had to create my own company because I also obviously had a different vision and created Persnickety Prints. And really it was just that 12 by 12 print. We have net, we haven't raised the prices. It's, there's still a dollar 99. It's been 10 years. It's amazing. And you have, I think what I love about your site is that you offer so many different sized prints. So for whatever you need, whether you want a little three by three to go in your pocket page, or you want to, you know, do a huge enlargement, you can do all the sizes. Even I love the four by eight one that you can put right into a traveler's notebook, perfect size for that. Like there's something for everybody on, you know, on your site of whatever they're looking for, you can print it and print it at that size. And I love that your site, I could go on and on about your site. It makes it so easy for the user to crop it or to resize it, you know, to get it, to get it ready to send. Well, thanks for saying that, Stephanie. Our site's a little different because of the sizes and people kind of get frustrated. They're like, wait, how do I do this? Because they're used to the Costco version where you're looking at your image and you have five sizes to choose from you know, your standard five by seven, eight by 10, 11 by 14, and four by six, and then that's that. But we are memory keepers, and we will create whatever print sizes that we need to fit into any album. Um, And because of that, because we have so many different sizes available, we are are ordering systems a little bit different, um, but really better than if it were the other way around. But yeah, it just takes a minute to get used to it. And, um, you know, no Photoshop required. So you could order a three by eight or, you know, the three by fours. And then we have come up with collage prints so that people can lay out, um, you know, variety of images on one print size as well. Six by eight is fun. Like you can fit a lot of little squares on there. And so I'm excited for your new albums to come out. Yes, it'll be fun. And I, and I have to say, so I was a a Costco photo printer for a very long time and nothing wrong with it. And I remember hearing about people talk about persnickety prints and a lot of people were from Utah that were talking about it. And I was like, well, it's local. They can probably just go pick it up and it's easy. And, um, and so when I finally used, used your services and used your, your company for the prints, um, I was blown away because a lot of times you get your prints back from other, Um, labs and there's a color cast to it you know there's like a tinge of yellow or a tinge of green or more contrast or they're a little darker than they looked on your screen yours is spot on to how your photo is on your computer or your phone and how it looks it looks even better in real life Um, how do you do that how is the processing different than other labs well um, for starters you have to remember grocery stores their purpose in having photos printed there or shipped there so you can pick them up um, are, is to have foot traffic. That's their sole reason to get people that walk into their store and buy more things. And so their, you know, their goal or their, you know, the way their business is set up isn't necessarily focusing on the print quality. Um, the prices are, might be lower or, or they can pick up, you know, within an hour or whatever, because they just want you to come in and buy more things which is, I get it, you know, that's business and that's how it works. Um, Also, well, also we do everything, we print everything in house. So we are OCD about, we are persnickety, which means fussy about the (laughs) small details, um, about everything. And um, with photographic printing, the darkroom process, these machines, um, they have the chemicals and the stabilizer like like the old film days. Well, if we don't clean those out regularly, then you do have a little like, Um, cast to your prints because it's like a washing machine. Imagine putting clean clothes into a dirty water in that washing machine and then just washing them again. Um, It just starts having that kind of a filmy look. Um, So we print everything. Um, We don't use, we don't do auto. We have a lab tech looking at every picture as it's going through the system. And we, we really do try to call it stop and call our customers. If, if we see something wrong or there's an issue Um, you know, we, we, we kind of like staying smaller for that very reason, because we, we have a lot of customers that need a little bit of handholding, which is totally fine. But our, our customers are not order numbers. Um, we do, um, you know, we have real photographers and scrapbookers doing the printing. So they think just like us. 
They do. And and you can tell the quality control is just the best because every print will come back and it just, it looks beautiful. I can't say enough good about that. Oh, thanks, and Steph. the shipping is super fast as well and inexpensive. And so that was the other thing because I was like, well, Costco's close, you know, and I can just run in and pick it up. But for those few dollars that you pay in shipping, um, just, you know, you get it within just a few days and it's worth it to get those those better prints, which if you're a scrapbooker and you're you're spending all this time on layouts and everything else, you want to have the best looking photos in your books. So absolutely love it. Um, and you're, um, you've shown a lot online about the difference with if having a big thing of water and if the, the pictures, the photos end up in water, how yours are different than others. Do you want to talk about that just a little bit? Like yeah. water damage or? Yeah, that's definitely a visual thing. But we've had customers that have survived, you know, Hurricane Sandy, floods. Um, a lot of people will put their photos on the floor in a basement and basements flood. Um, because of the process that we use, we don't use ink at all. And so that's um, one reason why these prints are so archival. Um, it is a, a developer process. So because it's a water wet process, they actually can be dumped in water and nothing will happen to them, so, um, which makes them also fade resistant. And we've had issues, you know, customers emailing us, showing us their album, even in pocket pages. They've printed at home and we have pictures of that on our blog of um, they just wanted something quick at home and um, changed states and humidity changes your prints and things like that. And so we really take all that into consideration um, with our whole entire business model. We want to make sure that these prints are going to last because that's the whole purpose in what we're doing. Absolutely. So as we we both enjoy documenting the good times, the trips, the travels, the fun things, um, but I wanted to ask you, was there ever a time in your life where maybe you were going through something and it was a hard time and did you document it or how did you decide to document kind of the more challenging times that you've had? Oh, that's a great loaded question, Steph. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, it's funny because we, as young children, we have this vision in our head of how life's going to work. We, I think, oh, I'm going to have four kids and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And it never seems to work out as as we expect. And so of course, again, with age comes wisdom, but as I as I was, you know, became older um, and my kids started growing up, you know, then things start happening and things that are out of our control. And um, you know, I have a mother who went through cancer and um, parents divorce. and then my after 18 years of being married, I found myself at the divorce stage as well. And that was, it blew me away. I had no idea that was coming. It was um, really, really hard. And with three young boys, I'm sitting here going, wait, I, this is my job. And this is my passion is scrapbooking our family albums. What? Like now my family is ripped apart. I don't even have a family. I mean, it was tough going through divorce and thinking, you know, um, how am I going to continue down this path? Um, yeah, that was really hard. And I just feel like, you know, with these situations in our life, our story is still our story. And regardless of the turns that it makes or the roller coaster that we might be on, um, that's almost just as important to document as our everyday great things. Um, because um, that's what we learn from our trials. You know, if we sit in our I, I've just learned so much. You sit in pain, whatever it might be, and you process it. And however you're processing it, whether it be journaling, which is so therapeutic and scientifically um, found, you know, to be very, very helpful, um, whether it be journaling or scrapbooking, just something to help you process is so vital to the outcome. And that's what I found myself doing. It was interesting because I couldn't, I didn't really write my feelings as much in the at the beginning, but I loved reading quotes on Instagram and, um, you know, all those little quotes you see. And so I just started screenshotting those and I would print them and I put them in my album because to me, those words described how I felt at the moment. And, um, I also, uh, you know, my boys were little and I don't like to, they don't, if they have questions about divorce or what happened, mom, or, you know, I'll definitely share with them, but there's just some there's this element between a parent and a child that really you're not, I, I can't um, dump all my feelings onto my children. 
but I would love for them to know how I felt at the time. And so I also spent a lot of time traveling on my own and gave me a lot of time to sit and think and write. And I would write um, in my albums letters to my kids about how I felt and kind of my, not my side of the story, but whenever you're going through divorce or anything um, tragic, it's you know, their side of the story or my side of the story or how I felt at this time and how, um, anyway, I just wanted to put that down into words and they haven't ever read it, but they will someday. They haven't read them yet. So you Mm -hmm. kind of wrote them with the intention of if they wanted to sometime down the road when they're adults to, to know what you were going through, they'd be able to, is that kind of the, yeah, absolutely. And I just feel, um, you know, maybe when they are adults, they would have more empathy at that time as well. Um, and just be able to process even what I was saying, um, and so, yeah, I, I love, and that's an, one other thing, why I, one other reason why I love albums like pocket albums is because I have this real connection with handwriting. Mm-hmm. I just feel like typed words are typed words. And when you can read someone's actual handwriting, it, you can feel like, look at our children when they're five years old, two years old, they're drawing pictures. We save those because it means something, right? Like their little handwriting, their misspelled words. And to me that, um, evokes a huge emotion and um, much more so than a typed print in a, in a bound book. Wow, absolutely. I was going through some old boxes a few weeks ago and stuff my mom had given me a long time ago, just from when I was growing up and there was a, like a report card, but on the back of it, she was like handwritten, like, I don't know, messages and like a little to-do list. And it was in her writing and it does, it just brings you back to like, oh, that's mom's writing, you know? And it, even though it was a silly little list or whatever it does, it brings you back to them and just your love for them. So that handwriting, it, it's precious, much more so than the the typed word. Although either one is good to document, but handwriting does have a special place in my heart. Absolutely. Let's talk just a little bit about some meaningful handmade creations that you have either made or received. So what is the most meaningful handmade project that you have created? Well, and that goes back to, it's funny because again, we go back to life circumstances and Um, My mother, I'm the oldest of five children. And it's ironically, it was during the time when I was, you know, the very beginning of Persnickety Prince. And it was so much stress um, helping my single mother battle leukemia. Hmm. And I would lay in the hospital bed with her with my computer answering emails and (laughs) helping customers. Um, But I started documenting her journey and she did not. She was so mad. She was like, no, do not. I mean, I took pictures of everything, video pictures and, um, you know, they're shaving her head. And my mom grew up in the generation where everything needed to look perfect on the outside. So she did not like, (laughs) yeah, very private. And um, we didn't know if she was going to live. And then she ended up having a bone marrow transplant. It was just a big, long journey. However, now, so I put everything together, all the photos that I'd taken and I created this album for her you know, cards people had given her Mm -hmm. and notes people had written and, um, you know, doctors feedback or, you know, I mean, you could put anything in these little in the pockets and it is her most prized possession. She's still with us and she's had a few strokes, um, you know, just really from, you know, the cancer, it just causes other problems. Um, but it's so fun for her. All she does, I mean, literally I'm going to cry because for mother's day, just, recently um my husband and I remarried by the way he loves looking at my albums too because he didn't know my the first half of my life but yeah. um my mom I literally we just went and delivered a huge bookshelf for her because all she does is sit near her bed and look at her albums and Aww. so um that's what she got for mother's day and the album her cancer journey it brings her so much strength to know wow I went through that and I conquered that that's amazing Well, and she went through it, but also for her kids and her grandkids and, you know, others to be able to draw on her strength by looking through that album that, yeah, that's, that's special. A hundred percent. Yeah. And, um, yep. And so I'm like, see mom, (laughs) I'm always right. (laughs) I knew you'd (laughs) like what I'm talking about. That's (laughs) right. What is the most meaningful handmade gift that you've ever received from someone else? Oh, that's a good one. So many, right? Like everybody and their talents. And, oh, I remember... Cammie Leonard, she is, used to be in the scrapbook community, 
she had like drawn me a portrait of myself and, and mailed it to me. Um, every, people have so many amazing talents, jewelry, things. But one thing that I cherish to this day is when I was married at age 23, my best friend had gone around to people that were in my life and my husband's life. And for our wedding gift, she put together, she had people write a letter to us. Mm-hmm. Kind of like when you're having a bridal shower and they say, give me your you know, top five you know, um, tips advice. for, yeah, advice. Yep. <laughs> and, um, so she had everyone kind of write it down, you know, from our parents, our grandparents and created this album with a picture of them and, um, their marital advice for us. And oh. again, it was in their handwriting. I think oh, she I used, back then it was like, you know, the sticky albums that you would have to like peel yes. off. And yes. that was the one that she used for that, but we still have it. And it's awesome. That is great. I love it. And in their own handwriting too. Always yep. special. Mm-hmm. Well, that is wonderful. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us, Shari. I feel like we could go on for hours and just just learn from you. But where can people find you online? At persnicketyprints.com. Okay. And on social media? Same? Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. Instagram and Facebook? Yes. Wonderful. We are online, all those places. If you have questions, suggestions, comments, let us know. Well, we appreciate speaking with you today. And I hope that everyone has been more motivated to go out and print those photos. And they'll, they'll have an excellent photo in their hand if they order from you. So thank you. Oh, thank you, Stephanie, for having me. It's been so much fun. We want to thank Shari for spending time with us today. I think we have all been motivated to get those photos off of our phones and printed and into our hands. We loved learning about Persnickety Prints and the many services that they offer to us as scrapbookers. And we hope you leave feeling more inspired to document not just the fun and easy times, but also the harder stories in your life. It will help not only you to process what you're going through, but by sharing your experiences, it can also help and lift others as well. You can find links to all of the products and resources we mentioned in this episode in the show notes, and you can go to scrapbook.com slash podcast for more information as well. Scrapbook.com carries over 40,000 unique items and is the number one online store for paper crafters. When you shop at scrapbook.com, you'll enjoy award-winning customer service, great prices, a huge selection of products, and super fast shipping. You also benefit from nearly 200,000 real product reviews from crafters like you. You'll find endless inspiration and meaningful connection in the scrapbook.com forum and gallery, and you can even take free online classes too. Be sure to subscribe to the Life Handmade podcast in your favorite app and enjoy our other episodes. And please consider leaving a review for the podcast as it will help other crafters like you to find it. Happiness is life handmade. I drive doodles of eccentric faces in the margin spaces of